two other muscles that are very important to palpate and assess, and if tight, to work when a client has a sacroiliac joint condition are the coccygeus and the levator ani. The coccygeus attaches to the lateral border of the sacrum and coccyx and then runs laterally over to the ischium and the levator ani attaches into the coccyx and then something called a median raphe and is located inferior to the coccygeus. The coccygeus and levator ani are considered to be pelvic floor muscles, but they're easily accessible from the outside. There are two methods to palpate them. One is to first find the piriformis and then drop inferiorly, always hugging along the sacrum and coccyx. The other is to find the ischial tuberosity and then come around onto the medial border first finding levator ani and then going up to coccygeus. The importance of these muscles is that if they attach onto the sacrum and coccyx, then when they're tight, they could inhibit movement of the sacrum and lock up the sacroiliac joint. Another importance is if they're weak, they may not be able to stabilize the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. So again, emphasizing the importance of palpating and assessing these muscles. So the first method, to find the piriformis, I find the PSIS, the joint between the sacrum and the coccyx. I run halfway between and drop off the sacrum. I find the superior aspect of the greater trochanter, and I know the piriformis is right in this line. Therefore, if I drop directly inferior here, hugging along the sacrum and then the coccyx, I will be on the coccygeus. Unless we're going to ask a client to do a Kegel exercise where they try to pull up on their pelvic floor, we would simply palpate this muscle at resting baseline tone. And it's usually best to palpate perpendicular to the muscle. Once we find coccygeus, we work right in here, inferior to coccygeus, palpating levator ani. And the idea is to feel for tightness or trigger points, or perhaps overly weak, loose musculature. Or we can find the ischial tuberosity right here, and then run in along the medial border of the ischial tuberosity, and then drop directly medial to that for levator ani and then for coccygeus. Because these muscles are located right at the inferior gluteal region, it's very important to have verbal consent from the client first to explain to the client what you're palpating and why you're palpating and to drape them very carefully. Let's demonstrate soft tissue manipulation for the coccygeus and levator ani muscles by standing on the opposite side of the table. So our client is lying prone, face down. If I find the joint between the sacrum and coccyx, I know that the coccygeus starts right there, inferior to the piriformis. So I can work along the coccygeus, either perpendicular cross-fiber work or longitudinal strokes in the direction of the muscle. And after I've worked it, I can then go inferiorly to work the levator ani in this area. There are two choices for working the levator ani. The first choice is working contralaterally. I'm standing on the left side working on his right side muscle. The advantage to that is that the orientation, the direction of my thumbs in this case, is away from the anus so that it's safer that I'm not pushing toward it. However, the disadvantage is some clients would feel that it's spreading the butt cheek a little bit and it might make them feel more vulnerable. So an alternative is to work from the same side 
ipsilaterally. So standing ipsilaterally on the client's right side for the right side coccygeus and especially levator ani, we can work in this way. The precaution when working on the same side is to be very careful about the excursion of the stroke and not to slip too far and possibly contact the anus. Regardless of working contralaterally or ipsilaterally, it is very important when working these muscles to first have verbal consent on the part of the client and explain the importance to them of these muscles as they relate to the functioning of the sacroiliac joint.